Hello class, and welcome to this uh, special video. I wanted to take a few minutes and show you a what a server lab looks like. You can think of this room as a mini data center, because uh, that's, that's what it's going to be eventually. Right now, it is still under construction. That's why you see all these blue cables hanging from the ceiling. Uh, that's why you see this MDF panel, which is this black rack straight ahead on the screen uh, is called. This is where all of the network cables are terminated. It's on the back of this rack. So this is often referred to as an MDF panel. And these blue cables that we see coming down from the overhead rack are uh, what will be referred to as infrastructure wiring. That means that these wires, once they're run, once they're put in place, won't move around a lot. Now, the ports that they're plugged into, the jacks out on the floor, for example, those are also stationary, but the wires that run from there, that's where you get your flexibility. But infrastructure wiring, as you might remember from our Dean textbook, is wiring that stays in place. You can see that it's all custom made as well. Right now, we just have large bundles of cables that are dangling from the overhead rack, and these cables are yet to be terminated. And you'll see here again that everything is customized. All of these are Cat 6 cables that the ends have been cut off and they're waiting to be punched down in the back of this MDF panel. So we see these ports here on the front of the panel, the yellow and the orange. Uh, those likely indicate different subnets, but I'm not sure what the color scheme in here means. But uh, anyway, these will be terminated behind the uh, behind this patch panel. So, a couple of other features in this room. One, I'll draw your attention to this overhead rack. Now, this is a pretty common uh, network cable installation. Uh, you'll, the other option is to have raised flooring. Now, it just so happens in this location that we didn't have the space, so we have a a standard concrete floor in this room. Another thing to note about uh, overhead racks is that they're a lot less expensive than, uh, than doing a raised flooring. But the raised flooring gives you other options, such as how to set up your heating and your cooling. But uh, a couple other features in here, we'll notice that we have what's called rail power. So when you're powering a rack of servers, you need, obviously, a lot of power. The, and so it's common to see uh, power distribution systems like we've got overhead in this room. This will allow us to move, you notice these boxes here each have plugs dangling from them. Each one of these boxes is going to support a single rack of servers. So there are these, in this case we have 30 amp, three phase uh, breakers per uh, enterprise rack. So that's, uh, if you're not familiar with those terms, that's, that's a lot of power. So let me continue the tour this way. This is an enterprise rack. It's empty, obviously, at the moment. Let me pull it out a little bit so you can perhaps get a better view. Here is a side view of the enterprise rack. And you notice that they're about six a little over six feet tall and racks do come in different sizes this one's a fairly deep one which allows you to put what are called cable management arms on the in on the back of the racks uh, but this is the front of a uh, the enterprise rack which again this is fairly common actually I misspoke this is the rear and it's got two split doors uh, you'll see different configurations from different vendors I'm sorry the lighting's not very good here, but if you could see inside this rack, you'll see that there are predefined mounting points to mount all of your servers in the rack. So it makes it easier to put in servers on rails and, and networking equipment and whatnot, but that's what an enterprise rack does. It's built specifically to allow uh, the easy installation of servers and other networking equipment. Here's another rack that's maybe a little better illuminated and just showing the side panels here but you notice that it's uh, 
It's taller than a refrigerator, deeper than a refrigerator. A lot of times you'll hear them referred to or, or sized as being like a refrigerator. Uh, it's a little bigger than that, but if you've never seen one before, this is, this is what it looks like. One other thing I'll draw your attention to here is how we built our infrastructure cabling. Here we have a bunch of boxes with Cat6 cable in them. And you'll notice that they all are they're all feeding the, the uh, cable at one time. So before this cable was cut, I'll pan back over here. You see these bundles of cables here. These were pulled uh, as one cable out of these boxes. So again, this is a custom cable installation. So all of the, if you can imagine all of these cables being bundled into one trunk and then pulled at one time up into the ceiling rack here. That's how these cables were initially formed, uh, which, uh, again, is very common for infrastructure cabling. You may be used to thinking of network cabling as something you might run down to Best Buy or, or go to Newegg and, and buy a 25-foot pre-made cable, but most of the, or actually uh, anytime you're talking about infrastructure cabling for a data center or for a corporate environment, it's going to be hand built. So I'm going to go up the ladder here for just a moment and let you take a look at the bundles that have already been made. And you'll notice that they're very neat. That's, that is a very nice job. These bundles are Velcroed together. These are, are strips of Velcro uh, so that if they need to pull a wire, they can if there's any maintenance that needs to be done. But you'll notice that it's very organized and very clean looking here in the tray, which again is the hallmark, one of the hallmarks of a professional installation. I think at some point in your career you will come across, a, we'll call it a spaghetti installation. You'll come into an MDF panel or, or some other networking installation that has wires running everywhere. Well, that typically isn't the infrastructure wiring. It could be, but typically it isn't. Um, if your infrastructure wiring doesn't look something like this, doesn't look very neat and organized, uh, then you, um, that may be the first place you need to start if you're doing any sort of troubleshooting or trying to clean up your environment. So anyway, this is the top view of a network rack infrastructure cable installation. And we'll see these ports here against the wall. These large tubes here are what takes the, these infrastructure cables into the next room. So all these cables here that are going through this large tube are going to be punched down, uh, uh, terminated on workbenches out in the lab next to this server room. So I'm going to come down the ladder here. One more thing I want to show you. This is also a feature of a, um, a server room installation, and that is uh, uh, heating and cooling. Servers generate a lot of heat and in this small room we've got, uh, it's hard to see right now, but we're going to have 10 separate server racks. So again, here's a server rack. We're going to have 10 of these that are filled with servers and hard drives. So they're going to produce a lot of heat. So correspondingly you need something that's going to turn over, it's called cubic feet per minute. You need a high airflow, a high CFM uh, heating and cooling installation. So I'll turn this on so that you can get an idea of what it sounds like at full bore. Okay, you can see that it's pretty noisy in here all of a sudden, uh, and if you get under one of these vents, you can't really see it up here, but if you get under one of these vents, it's very, very uh, windy. You could almost fly a kite in here with the number of CFMs that are being pushed through this small room. So at any rate, I wanted to show you what this small data center looked like and to give you an idea of what infrastructure cabling uh, and server racks look like and I, again this is a fairly typical installation you will see this type of hardware uh, no matter the size of the lab if you're doing a 20,000 square foot lab or a 
2,000 square foot lab. The components that you see here are very common and